Welcome back, guys. So despite all the claims of sexism in the Star Wars fan base, the person Disney is building Star Wars around doesn't even believe it. So after being asked a loaded question from NBC Today about the sexism in Star Wars, Daisy Ridley responded, I think my take is things get blown out of proportion, and the interactions I've ever had with people have been nothing but wonderful and supportive. I've only ever been embraced, and I think we're going to make a great film. She's a nice lady! Good for Daisy Ridley to not just fall into that typical narrative of, oh, the Star Wars fandom is so toxic and sexist. You're a problem. You're a real, real problem. Because nobody ever had a problem with Daisy Ridley. I don't know how many times people have to say, we don't have a problem with Daisy Ridley, we have a problem with the character of Rey. Not because she's a woman, but because she's terribly written. But that's not exclusively a Rey thing. I could understand the argument if people said, oh, I just love the sequel trilogy. It's just that Rey person just bothers me. Smug aura mocks me. No, people had a problem with the entirety of the sequel trilogy. That's Kylo, Finn, Poe, Rose. They even managed to ruin Luke. Look on the mask of my boy. So it's never been a gender thing. It's a bad storytelling thing. And it's just the fact that Disney did a terrible job. Anytime people talk about Rey, it's not about her specific acting abilities or her as a person. It's they don't like her character because there is no character. They didn't build her up. They didn't develop her. So it was just poorly written all around. Some people hate this. They fucking hate it. But we want to know what you guys think. Do you think this is a sign that Hollywood is finally coming to their senses? Let us know in the comments. And by the way, thanks for joining us. And if you think the best way to fix these problems is for fans to get together and talk about it, make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up on this video. There was so much excitement in the first film when you saw Rey and they like threw her backstory away. They actually could have built her into an awesome character. They chose to try and make a statement by saying she has no legacy just for them to undo all that in The Rise of Skywalker and say, no, actually she does have a legacy. She's just a Palpatine. It was so obvious that there was no plan. We've heard from Adam Driver that there was no plan. Disney know they did a bad job. And unfortunately they tried to hide behind Daisy Ridley and say, don't hate Daisy Ridley. And people are like, bro, we don't have a problem with Daisy Ridley. We have a problem with that. You guys did a terrible job of writing it. You had two directors flip flop back and forth with each other trying to undo each other's work. That was never going to make a good Star Wars film. And the narrative that was latched onto was that it was somehow an identity politics issue and not just a, dude, y'all made a bad Star Wars trilogy. And Daisy Ridley even backs this up by saying that she's not excited to work with Charmino Babe Chumwa because she's a woman, but because she likes her documentaries. And she's hoping that it can be a, a wonderful film because she likes the story that's written for her. Yeah, and I think that that just shows that a lot of these actors and actresses are trying to distance themselves from the identity politics that seems to be running Hollywood. They realize that, hey, fans actually aren't that toxic. You know, you can't just cherry pick a couple trolls on the internet and say, hey, well, we found three bad people, so you know, take the millions of fans and just disregard them. No, most fans just want you to be a good custodian of the things that they love. And that's not an unreasonable ask. That's actually the least you could do. <laughs> like at least pretend you care. Yeah, don't pull the Taika Waititi like, I never cared about this shit. <laughs> and then be surprised when people are like, yeah, I don't like you anymore. I don't want you working on my stuff. It's like, why? Be the part where you told me you don't care about it. Like, I don't like people who don't care about the things I care about working on my shit. Yeah, and she's also not the first person to say this. We've seen multiple actors coming out and saying that they want to support fans and make sure that they're only working on projects that actually support what fans want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom Holland came out and said he wouldn't come back to Spider-Man unless it was a faithful portrayal and a worthwhile story. Obviously, the go-to is Henry Cavill. Yeah. Oddly, all three of them are British. I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if maybe the uh, the memo from Hollywood didn't make it across, you know? But no, I think they genuinely want to have a career. And they realize baiting yeah. fans is not a viable way of getting people to go see your movies. For a little while it was. For a little while you could like shame people and have people go to the theaters, but the ticket sales show that it just doesn't work anymore. I also think these actors are realizing that they need fans to go see their projects. Like they need people to come see their stuff for it to be profitable and for them to continue getting more work. So they don't want to be making movies for empty theaters. Yeah, I think they want to have a career and it turns out that having a passionate fan base who likes going to see you <laughs> is like a really good way to sell tickets. And then I think they're also realizing people don't like you personally, they're for sure not gonna go see your movies. Yeah, which has been a weird narrative lately that it's just not a popularity contest. Like, dude, Hollywood is absolutely a popularity. <laughs> like you hire an actor by how much of a fan base they have. And so they want to be able to 
openly antagonize their own fan base, mm -hmm. but then also still have like a loyal group of people that go see their movies. Yes, and I think they're remembering that people used to go see movies just because of specific actors. Mm -hmm. You want to go see movies just because Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt were in the movie. Or Angelina Jolie. Or yeah. The days of actually just knowing that you enjoyed seeing a charismatic person on screen have really been neutered when they're put into projects that don't do them any favors. You look at like Star Wars and the sequels, dude, I don't think any of those actors have the ability to do a good job because the characters are so badly written. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you supposed to work with? I mean, they told us that Poe wasn't even supposed to be in it. They just kept him around because Oscar Isaac didn't want to die off. And not even that, with yeah. Adam Driver realizing that his character didn't even get the arc it was supposed to. Yeah, they, they put, sold he, him on a completely he, different thing. Yeah. And so, he, and again, I think it's such an important thing to remember that these actors don't sign up to actively destroy the IP. They get sold like a bill of goods. They show up on set like, hey, here's the scripts. Like, this isn't what we talked about. They're like, well, you're under contract now. So f it, you know, you have to do it now. <laughs> yeah, which is really up. It is. And then they get marched out in front of the studios and be like, hey, well, if you don't like it, it's a representation on you not liking Daisy Ridley because she's a woman. And it's like, dude. This is also why I think she's being vocal about not having a sexist Star Wars fan base because she's no longer gonna be like the cannon fodder between the studios. And she no longer wants to be associated with any like bad blood. She's like, you guys, I like you, you like me, we're good. <laughs> yeah, somewhere along the way, Hollywood decided that, well, we don't want to do fan service, so we'll just do the opposite. We'll do things to actively make fans unhappy, mm -hmm. and that's somehow more creative and artistic. It's like, <laughs> that's just a great way to make sure nobody goes to see your films. I think as a fan, it's important to give credit where credit's due. As a fan, this is what I want to hear from my actors. So great job, Daisy Ridley, bravo. I, and I hope more actors follow in her footsteps and get rid of all of the nonsense. Yeah, because obviously the fan base is what made Star Wars so valuable. And so if more actors start saying, hey, I'm gonna use that as a resource, it's a win-win. It's gonna help their careers, they're going to be loved, and then guess what? Fans are gonna get what they want. And we can just dispel this need to just brand everything as toxic. And we can just get back to having a cool, chill fan base where everybody can enjoy Star Wars. And it'll be a good time. <laughs> yeah. But you guys, let us know what you think. Thank you for watching this long, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.